Hey, I'm Troy Singleton here in the automotive department at Sinclair College and today we're going to talk about voltage drop. Now voltage drop is a little bit different from available voltage. Available voltage would be like you take your meter and you measure voltage across the battery or you measure to see if a component has voltage or available voltage to it. Now today voltage drop is a little bit different. Voltage drop is actually checking to see how much voltage is being used in the circuit. So in this case, let me give you an example. If I look at this bulb, okay, this bulb is using 11.8 volts. Now, if I look at my supply voltage, so what I'm starting with, which would be very similar to a battery, okay, we're looking at about 11.9, so about 12 volts. And again, an automotive battery is about 12 volts. So in this case, we start with 11.9 and our component that we're trying to operate in this circuit is using 11.8. So we're losing just a little bit of voltage, but the, the point of this is for diagnosis because if this particular component was not using the full 12 volts or very close to my available voltage, then we have a problem somewhere. So the best thing to do if I have a component, so let's say uh, a power seat motor, uh, a starter motor, um, we could look at a blower motor, any component that we're trying to operate on the vehicle, most of those components are going to operate on 12 volts. So what you do if that component is not working like it's supposed to, or maybe it's a headlight that's kind of dim compared to the other ones, if you measure how much voltage is being consumed by that component and it's not your source, then most likely you have a problem. So there's how you measure it at the source. It's just simply taking your positive lead and putting it before the component and taking your negative lead and putting it after the component. As far as my meter setup, this meter is pretty easy because it's auto ranging. I'm in DC volts and it's an auto range. So it's going to pick up um, whatever voltage we're actually measuring. Now, if I did have a problem, let's say that I measured this bulb and it's only measuring maybe nine volts. What am I going to do from there? Well, the best thing to do is to take your red lead and go all the way to the beginning of the circuit. So in most cases, that's going to be the battery. So this represents my battery. So I'm going to take my red lead, put it all the way at the top of the circuit. So all the way at the beginning, positive side of the circuit. And then I'm going to take my black lead and I'm going to put it before the component I'm trying to test and take a look at that number. Now, this one's measuring 0 0.130 volts, which means about 130 millivolts. Our spec is 200 millivolts. So we're well below the spec on the positive side or sometimes referred to as the feed side. So if this was in a live circuit and this component was dim, I do not have a problem here. Now, if I want to do the ground side, same thing. I take my red lead and put it after the component and my black lead goes all the way to wherever this component is grounded. So this represents the ground. Okay, again, you could go all the way back to the battery, the frame or the body, wherever the circuit is grounded or a good ground. In this case, the specification is the same, 200 millivolts or 0.2 volts. And you can see on our meter here, we are 0.014. So just like when we started out, when we started out, we're measuring about 11.8 and as far as the component, our source voltage is 11.96, really, really close to 12. So again, we're only losing just a little bit of voltage and we can tell that we do not have a problem in the circuit. But again, if we did, this is how you would measure it. This would be the feed side from the very beginning to the beginning of the first component. And then the ground side would be after the component all the way to the ground, wherever the circuit's grounded. Or again, you could use a chassis ground, a body ground, um, an engine ground, or even the battery. Okay, so that's how you measure voltage drop in the circuit. So thanks for watching. Check out our other videos and we'll see you next time.